It's a commission for the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts and it's for a multi-purpose gallery that is going to be used for showing large-scale artworks and also to have events. I started talking with Mark Johnson, the director, a couple of years ago. They were uh, interested in having several artists think about doing something. And we looked at painters, sculptors, neon artists, iron artists, uh, just about everything you could think of, including glass artists. Eventually, it came to the point of making a drawing. So I did first a thumbnail sketch and uh, inked it up and uh, laid in watercolors so that the museum would have a clear idea of what the composition and content was, although there were none of the details of the glass painting. And I sent that off to the museum and their committee met and they decided that they'd like to commission the artwork. We decided upon the artist Cappy Thompson and there were many reasons for that. Number one, we we owned a Cappy Thompson piece, a beautiful glass vessel in our collection. She is known as a glass artist, but really that's the structure on which she paints. The title of the piece is The Stars Falling on Alabama. We are enraptured by the celestial fireworks of the muses. And of course I knew there was a famous song, I knew the song, but it, it was a meteor shower in the 1830s that was uh, really lit up the skies, particularly in Alabama, and uh, so there's a lot of lore about it. And I've been working with muses for a few years in my work, and I thought that it would be nice because a museum is the temple of the muses, so there would be a big scene with these sort of angelic muse figures and a, a kind of a big splash of sparkling stars. And then there are a group of people on the lower right and they are watching this beautiful scene. And the quilt that covers them uh, is relates to the museum's permanent collection. So each of the uh, quilt squares has a little image that is taken from one of the paintings or sculptures or uh, there's a porcelain piece so that it relates to the to the site and also they have a wonderful quilt collection so that's conceptually uh, and thematically where I was coming from with the design. After I had received the commission, I then went to make a one quarter scale painting in glass. This is a traditional glass painting technique. It's called grisaille, gray tonal painting. It's a French word. And it's basically the same technique uh, that was used to paint stained glass in the Middle Ages. And there are several applications of black paint. This is the first one, and it's the line work, and it's also called tracery because I'm tracing my cartoon, my drawing, my pattern. But this will also eventually be called a cartoon because I'm going to print it on paper, and that will be my pattern for painting the full scale. Nice thing about this particular technique is that you're not married to it. You don't have to keep it if you don't like it. You just remove the paint and paint it again until you get what you want. Until you fire it, and then it's really fixed. Then a subsequent wash of black will be put over the piece and I'll do tonal work. And then I'll pounce into it with dry brushes 
so it'll look more or less like an etching at that point. So each section became a transparency that I could take to Kinko's and copy. And put through their uh, scroll scanner and print full-scale cartoons from. So at that point, I could bring the full-scale cartoons home, look at them, and see if any adjustments had to be made with parts of the drawing, correct the, the full-scale drawings, and then I rolled them up and got ready to come to Germany. My line work has a fairly traditional look. I have this kind of epic folk style, and it's a, it's a kind of a visual language that I've developed over the last tw really 20 years of painting, 25 years of painting, that allows me to tell a story. She works in a, a style of stained glass manufacture that reminds us of churches and windows of many centuries ago. But like a lot of artists today, she works in a more technologically advanced world and uses the advantages of that technology to create her own windows. And in the way that she approaches painting on glass, uh, her work is definitely quite unique. We're at Derek's Glass Studios in Taunusstein, Germany. And this is a very special place. It's a fabrication studio that does work internationally and uh, is capable of doing large scale work. And there isn't anything uh, in the United States that really is capable of working this way and at this scale. It's a a place where I'm supported by uh, their staff of painters and glass cutters and basically I'm supported to really do this project and get the help that I need to to realize it in a reasonable time frame. So it's just a wonderful facility to come and do that. The first part of the painting process is establishing the black drawing. So I do exactly the way I paint uh, smaller pieces. First the contour work. And because we're only going to fire the black one time, I use an oil-based paint for the line work. And that hardens after about two days, the paint is very hard. And then it can be airbrushed with the black paint for the second layer of the tonal work. The grisaille process is a medieval technique for painting on glass. It's a process where the whole piece of, of glass is covered with the paint. The panels are then put up on a, a big light easel and I can use dry brushes to work subtractively into that black mat. Then dry brushes are shaped by burning over a candle to either a dome shape or a flat shape and pounced to make a dot pattern or drawn through to make a line pattern. So it's, it's a way to bring the interest of the tonality to the painting. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of the grisaille work, the glass looks like a big etching, basically. It's, it has a lot of similarity to printmaking, in both in how it's done and, and how it looks. After the black paint has been applied and scratched into, the panels are fired, and that permanently affixes the, the drawing to the glass surface. So I'm getting ready to apply some contact paper, which will be used as a resist um, to block the clear places when we spray the blue enamel. Okay, all the upper sections of this design, the sky parts, are a transparent blue enamel that's airbrushed. They look great. After the blue enamel has been fired, the uh, panels are all cleaned carefully and put on a glass rack and they're collected by a tempering plant. So it's a, basically a glass manufacturer that has a, a, a big annealer. It's a layer annealer, so it's a conveyor belt basically that goes through a, a kiln that has a, a controlled program the tempering is a controlled shock to the glass, so basically it's very quickly heated and cooled in a particular ramping uh, phase, and the glass is toughened. It makes it safe for architectural use, so it's both very hard, and it also, if it does break, it shatters. The blue of the sky is enamel, and all the other colors are pieces of stained glass that have been cut to the shapes of the painting. Then the stained glass, some of the stained glass is etched with hydrofluoric acid to remove color so that I can have, for example, a two-toned pink dress. The big angel on the left has got a red with kind of a peach colored motif. The tambourine angel has got an orange and yellow motif. And you see how the glass has a structure and so it has a kind of a brilliance that enamels won't give you. These are opalescent colors that I've picked for the quilt and I want some beautiful soft colors that will catch some of the light so that the lower part of the image glows in various kinds of light and uh, holds up against the brilliance of that cobalt sky. All the faces here will have, you know, the eyes will have a little color, the cheeks, the lips, and various skin tones will be achieved with, with transparent enamels, which are also fired on. Once all the treatment has been done to the individual pieces of glass, the tempered pieces are laid out with the paint side down on the table. So uh, 
the, everything's carefully cleaned and all the pieces of glass are lined up on the glass painting exactly where they need to be and they're all marked so that they're positioned properly. The glue is poured out and the pieces are positioned by the marking on the glass and taped down. It's a two-part silicone glue and the glue is completely transparent and it allows for different coefficients of expansion. So uh, the stained glass is softer than the plate glass, so the heat and uh, cool at different rates so this glue will never harden so it, it allows for those different materials to expand and contract at different rates without any stress to either. And after an hour or so the glue sets up to the point where it can be peeled away and then lots of cleaning and uh, then the art glass is completed. The next thing that happens is that the panels will be sent to a subcontractor that will make them into insulated window units. It's a museum setting so we don't want any UV light uh, damage to anything so there's a special coating on the second piece of glass and then the, it's an architectural unit that will be created and shipped to the museum. Then they'll be installed. this blue. That is more spectacular than I thought it was going to be. I can't forget the glamour Your eyes held a tender light While stars fell on Alabama I never dreamed in my imagination A situation so heavenly A fairyland where no one else could enter And in the center, just you and me, dear My heart beat like a hammer my arms wound 